Hello guys. Uh, okay. Um, my name is Iran. Uh, I represent Engineering today, and uh, in a few minutes we're going to start our first uh, live tutorial session. Um, so basically today we're going to talk about um, the new tool, which is probably already not so new. It exists for um, some time already, but it's been uh, very popular, popular in the past uh, few months. Uh, the tool is called Mid Journey. It's an AI which um, a lot of designers, architects, and uh, illustrators and other creative professionals use uh, to facilitate their work or to make some things which um, um, would not be well would be possible, but would not take as little time as we are taking now with Mid Journey. So. Um, the topic of today's uh, stream is not only to show you some tools that we have been uh, implementing in our workflow since uh, this uh, Midjourney AI has uh, emerged, but also to discuss uh, the, the potential and uh, either a threat or a benefit of using this tool. Uh, some people say that the Midjourney might um, disrupt the profession and it might uh, leave uh, thousands of people without uh, their jobs because it's simply superior to uh, us. Some other people claim on the other hand that uh, this tool can actually help you to speed up your creative process, to speed up your um, uh, initial design phase and also to maybe make some things which uh, would be taking so long to achieve, uh, make them just faster and easier to be made. So today I'm going to show you some tricks that we have been using uh, as uh, designers to make some um, three-dimensional shapes and models based on the images generated by the AI. Um, let's start from something very simple. And I'm going to, of course, I'm going to use uh, Rhinoceros and Grasshopper to make it because those are the tools uh, I'm using uh, in my um, daily uh, work and uh, yeah basically let's let's uh, go straight ahead uh, for this uh, particular for this particular uh, tutorial I have uh, prepared several textures and a couple of uh, images that uh, I'm gonna share uh, the link to download them after this uh, session is uh, finished by the way uh, we're also going to add some links to our website our instagram and some other resources where we provide uh, more uh, tutorials and um, videos related to parametric design uh, run a server 3d as of 3d so please feel free to check them and to follow us and also don't hesitate to reach us to reach out to us um, if you have any questions or if you would like to um, have a course or um, a session with us Anyway, let's let's move on. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's let's start from something simple. Let's make um, let's make a three-dimensional uh, flat, uh, like not flat, but how do you say it? Like uh, let's convert a two-dimensional image into a three-dimensional shape. And in order to achieve this, I'm gonna simply bring in the picture tool uh, from Rhino. And as you can see here, I have already prepared several images for our today's session. Let's start with uh, this one. Uh, it's gonna it's called placeholder two. Uh, well, actually, this is like th those are two images which are um, quite similar, but they have some differences. And I will touch these differences a bit later. So let's open this image. And let's uh, bring it to Rhino. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this like that, uh, bringing the image first, is because uh, we will need to use this initial surface and its dimensions to actually generate the texture and generate the volumetric three-dimensional shape uh, for this texture. And then uh, let's go to Grasshopper. So I'm going to set up the bifocals uh, for you so you can uh, see the names of the different components and um, uh, you can follow uh, you can follow me or also don't worry the recording will be available on our YouTube channel after the session is over. So yeah, let's let's just uh, get straight to this creative process. Let's take this picture uh, surface, I said one surface. Then uh, I will take the dimensions of um, of this surface. Uh, 
to generate this kind of um, rasterization of our image to uh, define the resolution of our future uh, three dimensional shape. So let's say we divide it by, um, I don't know, let's say I'm going to measure 136 by 136. It's square, which is good. Let's say it's going to be 6 millimeters to start from, or actually 6 units, because actually I don't even know which, which units we are working, which is, uh, you should actually define this uh, before you start working, but for our particular case, it doesn't matter that much. So, yeah, and then I'm going to divide this into a grid of points, or actually, uh, what can be also doable is um, we can make a mesh surface. Uh, with this uh, with this resolution and simply extract the points from it, the vertices. So, okay, uh, doesn't seem uh, such a great resolution. So we can make it uh, much much finer. Just be careful to not reach zero because in this case the uh, solver can go into nirvana. So it's better to set this to something like zero point five, let's say, as a minimum, uh, so that we can not go too crazy, right? Okay, seems uh, okay. And I'm gonna also, yeah, I'm gonna start uh, unpreviewing some um, components. And let's say I deconstruct mesh uh, to extract the vertices and to be able to actually manipulate them. Then uh, I will take the image sampler and bring in this, this picture. But I'm gonna bring not exactly the same picture, I'm going to bring in the, um, the another image which is uh, located here, which is, um, yeah, we can take the file path and we can bring this one, which is called Best Relief. And um, yeah, basically you will, you will see the difference now. Uh, you see that we have black background here. Uh, it's done on purpose. Uh, it's done on purpose to make sure that we do not make the background as it's the brightest part of the image. We need to make sure that it doesn't um, get confused with uh, the rest of the image, you know, so because it's kind of the sky and it should be the least uh, extruded part. Uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, perfect. Now let's 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 do the following. Um, the image sampler, what it does, basically, it takes the image and it allows us to find different. You see, like it starts from zero and ends at one here, and it does the same uh, vertically. So basically, it works in a very similar way to the MD slider, which um, allows us to find points on a surface. So in this particular case, um, it takes a certain parameter from a point, and uh, allows us to take to extract the value uh, in this particular point. So for example, if we want to say that we want to work with color brightness, for example, it will take a point in a certain coordinate and will extract the brightness in this particular point. And this brightness, this parameter of brightness, we can later on convert into anything, basically. We can convert it into, um, into a height, into length, like any, any other parameter, right? Okay, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna say, uh, yeah, time is fine. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say okay, and um, yeah, and then uh, we need to provide the, you see, it, it became uh, black and white, right? Uh, monochromatic, because uh, it just uh, represents the brightness, not the color, yeah? So now what we can do, we can, uh, yeah, we can also make another image sampler directly uh, with, um, with another image, with this image, uh, to make sure we will also have colors, right? And in this case, we instead of selecting the color brightness, we select, we select uh, RGBA colors. We say okay, yeah. All right. Uh, so now uh, we need to provide the the points for this uh, particular image sampler, and in order to create these points, we need to use the surface and the coordinates and the UV parameter of the surface, right? UV parameter of each point on the surface. So in order to, to extract these parameters, uh, let's grab the component that is called um, surface closest point. By the way, guys, if you need to look for a component and you don't know where is it, you just 
hold the, well, for Windows, you hold Control Alt and left click on the component, and it will show you the, the location of this particular component. And right now, I'm going to use these vertices as points and uh, the surface as um, surface, right? There you go. And then uh, I'm also going to take, I'm actually going to make a relay here so that our script is a bit more organized and a bit less spaghetti. And then let's take the evaluate surface component and uh, let's connect surface to surface and UV parameter to UV, right? Okay. Uh, actually, no, actually, only this. We just need the UV parameter, right? And then let's check the, the values that we get generated. Okay. Okay. You see that the generated values are in the domain from 0 to 1, right? Which, uh, if I'm not, I'm not mistaken, 1 is white and 0 is black. So everything in between is uh, basically shades of uh, gray. So, uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to take this, uh, this, um, va this va these values and we're going to remap them into, into um, heights because we're going to extrude, uh, we're going to move each point and then we're going to rebuild our mesh based on these points. So let's connect it here. Let's also take the bounds. Why is it important to take the bounds for, for uh, instead of using the default uh, source domain from 0 to 1 is because in this particular case, yes, we have uh, zero for black and we have one for white parts. But in some cases, we might have images which are very, which have a very low contrast, let's say. And in this case, our domain can be a bit different. And if the source domain doesn't completely correspond with the domain of the values, it might um, cause some inaccuracies and some problems for us. So let's do this and let's construct the domain. Uh, and this domain is going to be uh, defining the the altitude of each point. So let's say I want it to be from, uh, not from completely from zero, but instead from uh, 0 0.5, let's say, to something like, mm, I don't know, let's say 12, maybe. Uh, doesn't need to be exactly the same. I'm just taking these numbers to as some, as the numbers with quite a big difference to be able to see the contrast between them. And let's, move the points and let's take the unit Z uh, to make sure that our points will go directly upwards. So let's connect it to move and let's take the vertices from here. Again, uh, organizing your other support script as a, as a separate type of art <laughs> because it's, it's, um, it's also quite important no, not only for aesthetical purposes, but it's also quite important for um, saving your time to organize your script properly so that you can uh, easily access and easily uh, find um, the part of the script that you need. So I'm going to organize this thing a little bit like this geometry. Uh, image sample part, let's see. Yeah, and yeah, this is going to be just that mesh, mesh rebuilding. And then let's take the construct mesh and uh, let's take the these vertices and these mesh the, those mesh faces to construct a new mesh. And let's have a look at how, how it looks in uh, 3D. Oh wow, uh, yeah, it's a bit extreme. So maybe what we can do. It's interesting. Why is it? Why did it like that? Uh, hmm. Interesting. Uh, hmm. It shouldn't be really like this. Hmm, it's interesting. Um, let's have a look. Oops. Um, 
Yeah, for some reason there is something wrong. I'm trying to understand if it's the if it's the if it's the image which is very contrast. I think it's not. I think there is some problem with uh, with the way I'm using this data. So it's something. Uh -huh. No, it's, it matches quite well actually. Uh, what happens if I increase the resolution? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, sorry, my bad, guys. Uh, one very important thing that I keep forgetting is that we need to reparameterize the surface. Right, because as we, as I have already mentioned, the image sampler works in the domain from zero to one, right? And as follows, the UV parameter has to be in the domain from zero to one as well. So if we take any other surface, the UV domain can be something completely different. And in this case, the the image sampler goes nuts, as we have just seen it. But right now, as we can see. It's getting somewhere there. We will, we will get there. So right now, let's um, yeah. Also, not to forget to mention, there are also some other um, tools which actually can help you to make a cleaner image from the new journey. There are some other neural networks. Most of them are quite experimental still, but they allow you to uh, extract not the image but extract the depth of the image. Some of them allow you to remove the background, some of them allow you to um, to increase the quality of the image, the resolution and other things. So yeah, please let us know in, in, in comments or like in private messages if uh, you would like to see more about this. We might make, uh, we'll, for sure we'll make more, more um, tutorials about, about uh, the application of AI in, in architecture and design, but also if you have something particular in mind, please let us know, we will be happy to, to make a um, tutorial session about that. Yeah, so right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, uh, these vertices and I'm going to also, um, um, I'm also going to define the color of each particular point. And in order to do this, I'm going to take the image sampler with the original image, right? I'm going to connect the same UV parameters as I used here. Well, because as long as we are using the same data structure for um, for uh, both data sets, it should be fine. And then uh, from here, I'm going to extract. Let's see which which um, sort of data do we extract from here. You see, this is the RGB colors, right? Because in here we selected RGB colors, right? So we can use these colors as colors for the vertices, right? We're using 75,625 um, vertices. And here we generate, actually how many, uh, I mean, we should generate the same amount. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah. Yeah, same, same, same number of, of um, say, say same amount of, uh, data values, right, of, of values. And let's connect it to color. Uh, yeah, also I'm going to save the file. I'm probably going to save it somewhere uh, here. Let's save this date. And uh, yeah, also please let us know if you'd like to, to get the, the script. Uh, we will be also able to upload it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and let's connect it here and let's see what uh, what happens. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get this uh, this uh, result and yeah, and let's see. I'm gonna take the mesh here and I'm gonna disable the in, the, in display. I'm gonna disable the mesh edges. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So, as you can see, uh, I would not say it's the most like, the most smooth result I 
ever had. We can also probably increase the resolution a bit more to avoid this kind of um, pointy and sharp effect. But to be honest, I would say it looks quite okay to me. Um, I mean, taking into account it's the first first try, uh, first try with this particular image, which is quite detailed. I would say it's it's okay. Also, another thing we can do instead of uh, having it horizontal, because right now it's quite tricky to to see it, right? Uh, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it vertical, and I'm gonna make sure that instead of using the unit Z, we will be actually using the the normals uh, to the surface, so that we can we will be able to place this surface in uh, in any way possible, right? So for uh, for that, I'm going to use the component that's called evaluate surface. Uh, we'll connect UV parameters to UV. Uh, we'll also connect the surface to surface, right? And we are going to, instead of using this vector, we are going to make an amplitude. The amplitude is a component which basically takes the direction of the vector and the amplitude, which is basically the length of this vector. So for the vertices, we will, for, sorry, for the vectors, we will use the normals. Uh, extracted from here, and for the amplitude we will use the output of the remap numbers. Let's connect it here, let's delete z vector, and let's let's add this to group, and what else can we do? Yeah, I think I will also place the evaluate surface into this group as well. Let's preview. And now, uh, if we really want to make this look like a facade, we can just turn this yeah, by 90 degrees and that's it, there we go, right? And then yeah, then we can also move the surface a bit up, we can go to front view actually, uh, we can um, align it with uh, the level zero, and we can hide this surface, yeah, there we go. So, um, okay, uh, I'm actually quite happy with the result. I think it's it's uh, it's not that bad. Um, there are some some peaks here, of course. Uh, we can also we can also um, cope with that by applying the graph mapper and by making sure that instead of having this um, kind of quite extreme. Um, Quite extreme uh, height difference. We can also make it a bit, a bit less significant, so that the overall geometry will be a bit smoother. So, in order to achieve this, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually uh, expand the script a bit more, and I'm gonna take the graph mapper. Actually, let's let's remove it from this uh, group and let's make another group here. Uh, sorry, another part of, of the group here. I'm gonna make the graph mapper. Yeah, and here, as as our graph mapper works in the domain from zero to one as well, right? I'm gonna disconnect this this uh, domain, and I'm gonna use it a bit later on. So let's let's connect the values here, right? And let's take another set of uh, remap numbers and bounds here. Let's connect it to amplitude. Let's connect this domain here, right? Yeah, I'm gonna drag it a bit more. So, from group. No. Yeah, sometimes it's it's uh, it behaves a bit weirdly, but I'm just gonna copy it, connect it here, and delete this thing. Okay, so let's create another group, which will be called um, um, balancing the. Extrusion, not extrusion, but like amplitude. And let's, yeah, let's let's try to play a bit with the graph mapper. Uh, so basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that the dark, um, dark areas will be extruded much less altogether, and bright textures are going to be extruded much more altogether, right? So in this case, we will make sure that we don't have such a big difference between 
let's say, white and pale beige or pale pink in our model. And on the contrary, we will not have we will also not have such a big difference between the uh, dark purple, black, and other like dark colors. Let's say, yeah. So yeah, you see, basically, basically, there are some issues with really, really extruded parts, which are like, uh, let's say, the bright among the dark. But all, all in all, it allows us to have a bit more, more contrast and a bit more clarity between uh, the shapes. I would still not go to that extreme. Uh, I would not still. I would still not go that extreme. I would go a bit, a bit. Uh, Yes, but you get the idea, right? That basically, by the way, feel free to send any any questions to the chat and uh, post them in comments. We will be we are like, monitoring our page and our tutorials quite quite oftenly, so we'll be able to answer your questions uh, with my colleagues. Yeah. So okay. I think we, we kind of accomplished our first uh, first attempt. Also, the last thing probably that we can do in order to make it a bit smoother, we can use the catmull Clark subdivision from Weaverbird plugin. Uh, super useful plugin. I highly recommend you to install it. Actually, I know I know a person who was uh, involved in the development of this project and uh, this uh, in this plugin, and uh, they're working on um, some. They're constantly improving it, so it's quite a, quite a useful tool uh, to have in your um, plugin collection. Uh, yeah, and as you can see, uh, you can feel the difference, right? Basically, instead of being that sharp, it gets a bit smoother, and also it has levels of subdivision, so we can um, we can set it from zero to from sorry from one to three because those are the only options we have here, and with every iteration, we increase the polygon count. Four times, I think. So be careful with this uh, tool, but at the same time, you see it gives us quite a smooth result here, right? Um, okay, uh, I would say that's pretty much it for the first exercise. We're gonna make another one, or maybe two, if we have time. Um, I'm probably gonna stream for um, maybe half an hour or one hour more. Um, so yeah. Feel free to to uh, get yourself a cup of tea and uh, join us. In the meantime, uh, maybe we can um, talk a bit about um, like I, I I would be, I would like to share like my thoughts about um, this uh, tool. I think it's uh, it's really helpful and uh, surprisingly, um, we, we we all were expecting that. In the future, humans and architects, in particular, uh, will be uh, will be the creators. They will be making the ideas and concepts, and then the machines will make it for us. But it seems like right now it's uh, quite the opposite because um, for the for the past few months uh, we have been using this tool quite a bit to generate some textures, some references, even some uh, some draft super draft concepts. Of course, they were. Uh, of course, they were fine-tuned later on by a human, but still. And then uh, the detailing, drawing, and uh, even um, like parametric optimization, rationalization of the shape of the project was done by, by humans, by people who were making uh, grasshopper definitions and uh, detailed Rhino 3D models. Uh, so yeah, but uh, I, I want to say that um, we should not treat this tool as a substitution of an architect. I would rather say that it's it's more a very important and quite quite useful asset and um, supporter for us. Because, uh, but at the same time, it's not it's not completely self sufficient. Uh, I have seen different different images with made with Midjourney. I've also experimented quite a bit uh, with this tool myself in my free time, and uh, I can tell that. Uh, the, the final result, um, it does not turn out great automatically. You really need to invest uh, quite a bit of time to understand which uh, prompts are work better for uh, your particular goal. You need to understand which adjectives 
have higher impact, which adjectives are almost um, almost uh, are almost useless, and so on. Uh, and you need to be very precise when you are describing the image that you would like to achieve. So, in a certain way, I would say this tool can be uh, very helpful for experienced artists, architects, designers, and at the same time, it's nothing more than a toy in the hands of a person who is far from uh, from um, the creative industry. And uh, this is not only my opinion, by the way. I, I was uh, having this discussion quite a bit with some of my um, friends who are doing graphic design, who are doing product design, and, uh, and those guys who are in the profession for much longer than myself, and they were all um, kind of um, agreeing that this is truly a very powerful tool. For some people, it's really a game changer because you can create concepts, images, and uh, textures, uh, logos, anything, uh, in almost no time. But at the same time, you need to have some, um, uh, some taste, some understanding of design in general, uh, understanding of colors, of um, shapes, of uh, psychology, I would say, because uh, uh, Midjourney kind of works with associations and um, it always uh, learns from us as well as we learn from it. So it's quite important to uh, understand if, if you are trying to make something, some interior or some texture, some item, which uh, needs to, to cause certain feelings, you need to be sure um, um, by, by, by what means can you achieve it? Like, for example, if you are trying to make um, some uh, some environment or interior which will calm, calm people down, for sure you would probably use some green colors instead of using red, right? So it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of similar, uh, this entire process. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think, I think we can proceed with the next exercise. Um, yeah, basically here we, we were dealing with a surface, with a planar surface. And uh, here the logic is pretty straightforward. I mean, it's just taking the image, um, using the, <coughs> sorry, uh, using the, extracting the brightness, uh, taking the um, value and using it as a, as, as a bump uh, bitmap. But now let's let's make something something uh, cooler. Let's take the let's take the yeah let's take a three dimensional shape. I'm gonna start from something very simple. I'm gonna create a simple cylinder, or yeah, let's make a cylinder. Uh, but I'm gonna make a cylinder with um, gonna make a cylinder with some uh, some trick here. So let's take. Let's uh, create uh, a cylinder that can uh, that we can that we will be able to turn into something more complex. So let's let's keep it in mind while while making our super simple shape. Let's uh, create twelve uh, points. Uh, I'm gonna use it to construct point. I'm gonna connect it to Z coordinate. Let's say the step is gonna be something like ten. Yeah, that's fine to me. Um, yeah, let's create circles. Let's use a graph mapper to control the shape. Let's use the range. Uh, be uh, pay attention here because if we provide, if we supply twelve. Uh, 12 steps, we will receive 13 values as a result as, a, as an output of range. So we need to right click, go to expression and say x minus 1 here, uh, just to be sure that we are getting precisely the amount of uh, values we are looking for. So let's connect it to graph mapper. Let's take the map. Uh, let's use the bounds as well. And for the domain, um, I don't know, let's say, so it's going to go from, from uh, let's say right now it's going to be 12, or not, I don't know, uh, 50. 
something like this. Uh, for the radius, yeah. Okay, so now it's a cylinder. And if I connect it here, and uh, I will connect another slider with a value of 50. Right now, there will be no difference between different sliders. I connect it here, and we get these kind of circles. And then I'm going to build a loft for them, which will result in, uh, in a loft, uh, in, a, in a cylinder. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see that we get this kind of... It's my, it's my privilege. Yeah, we get this kind of geometry, and um, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, we can we can convert this surface into into a mesh as well. We can do actually the same thing as we did here, right? Uh, but first of all, let's let's uh, bring in the picture that we're going to be using for uh, for um, this setup. I'm going to take this. Uh, Seamless metal texture first, yeah, and yeah, that's it, right? Okay, so let's do the same thing as we did here. Let's actually let's actually take the very same setup. I'm just gonna copy it like that, and I'm gonna bring it here. Uh, it's gonna take a bit of time. Let's take this as a surface. Takes some time to compute. Maybe it's a bit too large. I think yeah, I think it's too big. Um, okay, yeah. Sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, maybe I should have set up a different resolution, but right now it's, it's way too dense. I think yeah. Let's increase it by ten at least. Let's make uh, let's make five instead of point five. And okay, you see, it uses the old texture still. That's why we need to go here. We need to um, change it to the very same uh, texture, and we do the same thing here. And this time. We, we can use the same image because it was not edited in any way. It's just a texture uh, with some depth and some um, uh, different colors. Yeah, you see, basically this is this is the mesh we are getting, right? So how are we gonna how are we gonna make it uh, three dimensional? Well, like I mean, it is kind of three dimensional already, but how are we gonna wrap it around this shape? Well. Uh, the first thing I would, I would probably think about is uh, just taking it and using the surface morph to morph this kind of final geometry around the cylinder. But this approach is, first of all, it's super heavy. Second, it, it's, it can result in some inaccuracies, which are really, really uh, disturbing sometimes. But yeah, first and foremost, it's super slow. So I suggest us to use another approach. And I'm going to tell you a bit more about it right now. So let's take this, let's actually hide this geometry. Let's take this uh, loft and let's divide it into the, using the same values for U and for V as here, right? Because for us, it's important to make sure that our data from the planar surface matches with the data from the cylinder, right? Okay, so let's take this entire setup. Let's take it here. Let's connect it to this mesh surface component. And yeah, there we go. Display to the mesh. Yeah, you see, right? Basically, we have these kind of uh, divisions. It's also it's also quite important to make sure that we do not con that we do not confuse U and V. Um, U and V for our geometry because um, imagine if if we're dealing with a quad it's fine but if we're dealing with something different it's um, it's not uh, like here for example we're dealing with a, with a rectangle so okay you see you see the dimensions are really different and here U and V seem to be the opposite of, of what they are here so 
In this case, we need to use the component to actually reverse uh, u and v directions to make u uh, to convert u into v and v into u. Thankfully, there is a plugin called Lunchbox, which has a lot of really useful tools here. For example, one of them is uh, called Reverse Surface Direction, right? And yeah, basically, what it does, it takes the uh, in our case, we need to set, set, it, set it to 3 and we'll take and change the U and V directions, right? Also, I'm gonna go to kind of see to say if I have to it, so it's fine. Yeah, okay. nothing, nothing takes too long so far, so uh, let's see. Yeah, you see now, now the surface is much more even than it was before, so uh, which is good, right? So and now, you see we have 2,960 vertices here, and we have 2,960 vertices here as well, right? The important thing to consider is that this mesh, well, this surface is not is not kind of closed, right? It's it's uh, well, closed probably is not the the best word to describe it, but it's not it's not encircled, right? It's not. It, like its its um, its edges do not meet, and here we have a seam. This surface has a seam, right, which is located precisely here. Yeah. So at the seam, uh, we basically have two sets of points kind of overlapping, right? So for example, if we or actually it's interesting it's interesting to see if um, it's gonna be like that in this particular case. So. Yeah, a fast way to check it out if you are not sure about something, you just extract the vertices, you say remove duplicate points, and then you compare the amount of points before and amount of points after. Yeah, you see, 40 points were removed, right? Which means that one row of points was kind of overlapping, right? So, what does it mean for us? Um, actually, nothing serious. Basically, the only thing, it, 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 the only thing uh, that matters for us right now is... Uh, <clears throat> making sure that we add one more here for the u, right? So let's right click and let's say expression x plus one, so that we don't have overlapping. Okay, so uh, it's, yeah, it is like this. And then what we do, we take this deconstruct mesh component and we We say we want to repeat points. And actually, I'm not 100% sure if this is the cleanest way to do it because I'll explain why. Because the amount of points stays the same, but when it removes duplicate points, it might take some points not from the end, but from the start instead. So, what I would what I would also recommend to do maybe maybe we can also just weld it. I think this way, this is this can also work. Yeah, you see, we had three thousand points before, and now we have two thousand nine hundred sixty points right now. Right, perfect. So now we have our mesh <coughs> welded, and um, yeah. Let's see how, how it look. Yeah, and now uh, now we will use. So basically, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make them a bit closer to each other so you can see. Uh, yeah, th th this this is this is actually quite a useful concept that I apply quite a lot in my uh, professional work. Um, basically, we create a flat flat surface where we can do whatever we want. We can map colors, we can create um, normals, normal maps and whatever. And then we have a matching structure, which is three-dimensional, right? So basically we just transfer data from flat surface to a three-dimensional surface, right? So we can uh, take these numbers and bring them here, basically, right? To use them as a to use them as a amplitude for our normal vectors. So yeah, let's let's just do this. Let's take the um, 
we need to take the normals from here instead of instead of here, right? So vectors will come from here. Uh, yeah, it's gonna take a bit of time to compute. Yeah, then we take the vertices from here and faces should also come from from this mesh, right? Because it's it's um, <clears throat> yeah, basically it has. Uh, by the way, don't 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 confuse the faces here with mesh polygons because mesh polygon is a geometrical thing. It's basically a um, face. It's it's a geometrical object, and here this face is just a sequence of vertices. Like basically, it shows how they are connected, right? So yeah. All right. So as you can see, uh, probably I should also decrease a bit the the amplitude. But as you can see, we used this um, this texture to create this mesh, right? And I'm going to actually going to disable so to enable the video and to disable the mesh basics, right? So this is our texture in 3D. And now it's quite low res, but we can simply go here and increase the resolution by like four times, let's say, right? And as you can see, it gets already quite a lot better, right? And then we can also maybe use the graph mapper. This time we can use it a bit more because this texture is um, actually quite close to a um, to a bitmap, right? It, uh, to, sorry, to a, yeah, to a bitmap basically. Uh, yeah, and as you can see, this thing already has the um, three-dimensional shape, and it's it's not it's not just a texture; it's not just a bitmap. It's actually a three-dimensional three, three, three dimensional model, so we can bake it and we can use it as a... We can, if, if, if we cap it from tops, right, from top and bottom, we can actually 3D print it and we can actually have this model as... Um, yeah, we can actually have this model. Uh, right, and then I was... Uh, we started from making um, a different shape for our cylinder, right, so now we can Play with the graph mapper a bit. Let's say I want to make it starting from 27 and go to 50. And again, we can play with the shape of this thing. So it does not necessarily need to be just a cylinder, it can be whatever. And the texture is mapped without any problems, as you can tell. <coughs> well, it might cause some issues, uh, like any other mesh, by the way, if uh, we decide to make it more. If we decide to increase this um, extrusion am um, amplitude, if we decide to make a crazy shape, like an, uh, not a normal base or cylinder, but something like really, really crazy with a uh, very um, steep curvature, let's say. But all in all, this workflow should work pretty fine. Um, okay, so... What else can we do? Yeah. Also, let's try let's try another image which we prepared. Uh, there's there there are not going to be any changes in uh, in the process. Um, the only thing which is going to change is just the um, initial surface and then the image sampler. To make the fa to, to make all the changes really fast, I'm going to disable the uh, solver and I'm just going to set this new surface, I'm going to go to image sampler and uh, set a new image, uh, like new path for the new image, right? This image, by the way, was also generated with mid-journey and then in Photoshop I just post-process it a bit uh, in order to make it seamless, basically by mirroring it um, along X and Y axis. So yeah, it's, um, I, I, as, as I mentioned before, um, it's almost never going to be the case that you can use a uh, raw mid-journey generated image as um, your design. First of all, because of the copyright. Second, because um, 
in most cases he would probably like to improve or change something. Uh, for example, right now we are making a library of uh, original trees, plants, and other things for um, for the shop collage that we are going to use in our work. And um, by the way, let us know if you would like to to get uh, this library. We will be uh, announcing it soon. <clears throat> and um, we are we are generating these um, things with the journey, and then. Um, uh, we cut them, cut them out like like any other PNG tree, um, and yeah, basically we increase their resolution using a couple other um, AI based solutions which allow us to do it. Yeah, you see, that's it. Uh, yeah, also I'm gonna increase the this sorry not this but this parameter. I'm gonna decrease it actually, actually this parameter quite a lot. To make sure it, it it's uh, to make sure it gets smoother. Yeah, you see. Ooh, this is actually not bad at all. Hmm, I kind of like it. Yeah, guys, let us know what you think. And um, yeah, I think this is this is not bad at all. Let's let's apply the cat move bar. But the result why 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 it's why it's as I said, <laughs> not bad at all, is because um, we had a very contrast image and all the parts which were kind of con convex, they were really bright and all the parts which were concave, they were really dark. In case when you have a complex shadow play, let's say, <laughs> something like this, like you have a lot of shadows and uh, you have some, uh, some um, concave parts with a shade on them, it might be not as precise and not as accurate and in this case it might actually require some post-production in Photoshop to make sure that basically making a texture and making a bitmap for the extrusion is that those those images are not should not be the same technically speaking right the image which defines the form and the shape it should not be it should not have any shadows or any lights ideally right it should just have colors where the darkest colors are the parts which should stay, which should be concave, right? We should stay behind, and the bright parts should. Uh, the bright parts are the ones that should um, protrude um, outwards, right? So yeah, let's let's try to apply this um, modifier. Let's set uh, the level to two, for example. For now. And let's, yeah, let's connect here. Yeah, you see, much smoother. So yeah, uh, basically, I would say that's that's it in terms of um, in terms of coding, uh, in terms of um, the super scripting and. Uh, uh, preparation. So please uh, let me know if you have any questions in, in the chat. Um, I will check it out now. And um, yeah, and uh, also even after this uh, tutorial session finishes, don't hesitate to uh, ask any questions and comments, and uh, we will try to help as much as we can. Uh, yeah, after all, of course, I'm going to bake this uh, geometry as uh, default. I'm going to disable uh, the Grasshopper's uh, presentation. And uh, here I need to change the mode to shade it. See? And we can also change it to render, actually. Ooh, nice. And then, yeah, then let's go to... Um, first of all, let's show everything. Let's take those images. And let's change them, let's change it to default and let's change this one to layer one and let's hide default layer. So if we have only our base, right? Yeah. yeah, as you can see, the topology of this mesh is not perfect, it's not completely clean. Um, because of as I said, the image was almost not post-processed, was not a the um, some colors were not completely um, fine-tuned, but this is just the beginning. For sure, we are going to uh, we are already kind of applying it in our works, which we cannot show unfortunately right now. 
But we will be definitely making more tests and um, touching other AI-based solutions uh, for architectural design in our next uh, coming sessions and tutorials. So please let us know in comments if you're interested in, um, in seeing something like that. Uh, to name just a few, there is another super powerful um, AI tool which is called DALI2. Everyone has been super hyped about it. And um, um, yeah, and uh, this tool actually is, from what I saw and what I know about it, is even a bit more flexible than Midjourney because it allows you actually to uh, edit your images and process and uh, make changes yourself, which is uh, really helpful. And um, um, yeah, it's. Um, and there is, there is another another tool which we might uh, touch in our next tutorials, which is um, which helps you to increase the resolution of your images and the quality of the resolution, uh, restore some lost parts of the images. Again, as any AI solution, it's not one hundred percent perfect, but it's uh, still uh, helping you um, quite a lot. Um, okay, so yeah, I would say. Um, that's it for today. Let's let's um, let's hope it was helpful for you. And uh, please uh, let us know in comments if it was. And uh, again, any questions, uh, comments, uh, ideas, uh, commissions, <laughs> uh, let us know. Um, okay. So thank you very much for everyone who has been here with us today. Uh, thanks to everyone who watches it uh, recorded. I'm... Um...